we want to determine which conic section is given by each polar equation, where for three of these, we'll write them in one of these two forms below, where if we write the denominator as one plus or minus e cosine theta, or one plus or minus e sine theta, e, the coefficient of cosine theta, or the coefficient of sine theta, is equal to the eccentricity. So if e is between zero and one, we have an ellipse. If e equals one, we have a parabola. And if e is greater than one, we have a hyperbola. So for three of these equations, we'll focus on making this constant here equal to one. But notice how this equation here, r equals five, doesn't fit this form. So we need to recognize that when r equals five, or the radius equals five, we would have a circle. And for all circles, the eccentricity is equal to zero. Now let's focus on the remaining three equations. And we will check each of these graphically. So beginning with r equals five divided by the quantity three plus seven cosine theta, we need this three to be a one, so we'll divide both the numerator and denominator by three. Which would give us r equals five thirds divided by the quantity three divided by three is one, plus seven cosine theta divided by three would be seven thirds cosine theta. So again, now that we have a one here, we know the eccentricity is equal to seven thirds, and since seven thirds is greater than one, the graph will be a hyperbola. which we'll check graphically after we determine the conic for this next polar equation. So if we have r equals five divided by the quantity three plus three cosine theta, again we want this three to be a one, so we'll divide the numerator and denominator by three. Which would give us r equals five thirds divided by, three divided by three is one, plus three cosine theta divided by three, which would be one cosine theta. So again, because we have a one here, we know the eccentricity is the coefficient of cosine theta, which is also one, and when the eccentricity is equal to one, we have a parabola. Let's look at the graph of these first two. Here's a graph of a hyperbola because the eccentricity was greater than one. And here's the graph of the parabola because the eccentricity was equal to one. We already determined this was a circle, so now we're left with r equals five divided by the quantity seven plus three cosine theta. So we need this seven to be a one to determine the eccentricity. So we'll divide the numerator and denominator by seven this time. which would give us r equals five sevenths divided by, seven divided by seven is one, plus three cosine theta divided by seven would be three sevenths cosine theta. So because we have one here, we know the eccentricity is three sevenths, which is between zero and one, and therefore the graph would be an ellipse. Let's look at the graphs of these last two equations. Here we have r equals five, which is the circle, which has eccentricity of zero. And here's the graph of our ellipse, where the eccentricity was between zero and one. I hope you found this helpful.